everybody and welcome or welcome back to my YouTube channel. So today's video is going to be a little bit different from my YouTube channel. Guys, I just made the best iced coffee I've ever made. If you guys don't know, I'm not a coffee drinker, but I love iced coffee. Don't ask me why I'm drinking iced coffee at half past six in the evening. I just really craved it. Today's going to be my Bacopathon TBR video. So if you guys don't know what Bacopathon is, it is something that goes on in the bookish community. And it's hosted by a channel called Becca in the Books and I've watched her for years. I have participated in this before I just never filmed it but I thought I would film a TBR so this is what Becca's Bookopathon looks like it's literally what the name would suggest it is a monopoly board but filled with book reading prompts so I'm going to start with four rolls but with Bookopoly if you end up rolling a double you have to roll another roll so those are the rules that I'm going to play by the same ones as Becca normally plays by in her usual ones I will link her channel in the description box below um, and I'm allowing myself to add in books that I am already part way through I, take, I think that's technically cheating but I'm doing it anyway but I thought before we get started since I want to show you guys my little version of the board I do this all myself so I'm really proud of myself for making a little mini version then I thought I would quickly show you guys my chance and community shelf cards that I have made these are still in pencil I haven't really like done any cute decorations on them or anything so for community shelf these are like book reading prompts that you have for yourself. So these are like extra challenges that aren't already on the board normally. So I have someone else chooses a book, uh, read a thriller, so a specific genre, um, read a romance, another specific genre, or a mood read card. So those are my community shelf cards. For chance cards, these are normally books that you want to read. You normally have like half that you wanna read, half that you don't really want to read. So I've done just that. I've got Withering Heights by Emily Bronte as one of them. I've got Misery by Stephen King. I've also got Throne of Glass by Miss Sarah J Maas. And I've got Meet Me in Tahini, which is by Georgia Tolofo. I think that's how I pronounce it. Sorry, you can see that at the edge of my desk, but my tripod apparently doesn't go high enough to see the top of the desk, so that's awkward. But I'm going to be using my little mini uh, panda stapler, which my boyfriend gifted me. How adorable is this, guys? I love it. Um, because I forgot the main point, like getting something to actually move around the board with, so it is a little bit big. We're going to start on go because everyone starts on go at the beginning of the couple of fun. I'm going to roll my tea little baby dice. Hopefully, I get it in frame. Oh, it's not devil. And um, that's five. So, one, two, three, four, five. Spring. So, this is like a book that reminds me of spring. Okay, so roll one got us the spring prompt, which is one of the season prompts, so all the stations are seasons. And for this, I'm kind of cheating, but the reason why will come clear in a little bit. And for this, I'm going to choose The Invisible Girl, or Invisible Girl, sorry, by Lisa Jewell. This is a book that I am currently reading. I am 223 pages into this. I did start it on the 1st of September, though, so I feel like it is all fair. I feel like this will match spring because the one of the most important dates in here is Valentine's Day night. So it's set in, like, the beginning of the year till spring, and spring is a month that is covered in here. Also, I wanted to get this book in here because I did want to get... The book that I'm currently reading onto the Copley TBR because it would just be easier for me. Roll number two. Nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Published slash set in 2020 or after. The second roll got us published slash set since 2020. And for this, I chose Just Like Home by Sarah Gailey. I'm in a bit of a thriller vibe. I feel like it's because I feel like we're coming into autumn. I haven't read any thrillers all year. Not deliberately, but just because I haven't been in the mood for them. Whereas recently, I'm definitely picking up on this one. I purchased when I was in America with my boyfriend over the summer. Um, and this one, when I when I had it in my hand, the lady in Barnes and Noble actually said, uh, Barnes, Barnes and Nobles said that she had just read this and it was a new release and it was so, so, so good and she can't wait for me to read it. She said she's really excited and that it's very good and she recommends it to quite a few people. This one sounds super, super interesting. Let me read you guys the synopsis because um, I don't want to say anything wrong or that's going to give anything away. Come home, Vera's mother called, and Vera obeyed. In spite of their long estrangement, in spite of the memories, she's come back to the home of a serial killer, back to the, back to face the love she had for her father and the bodies, and the bodies he buried there. Coming home is hard enough for Vera, and to make things worse, she and her mother aren't alone. A parasitic arti artist has moved into the guest house out back and is slowly stripping Vera's childhood for spare parts. 
He insists that he isn't the one leaving notes around the house in her father's handwriting, but who else could it possibly be? There are secrets yet undiscovered in the foundations of the notorious crawler house. Vera must face them and find out for herself just how deep the rot goes. I'm really, really excited to read this. I have not seen this in the UK, but also guys, look how pretty the cover is. I love Roll it. Roll number three. Oh no, that's the first double. That's double six, 12. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Ooh, features a romance. Okay, we can definitely. Third roll landed us on features a romance, and for this prompt, I chose a court of ruins and ruin. I was going to choose Meet Me in Tahini by Georgia Tolotho, um, but then I realised it says features and not is a romance, and that technically is just a romance book. Whereas this is fantasy romance, so I felt like this kind of feel, fits the prompt better. But if I do run out of time in the month, um, I will end up reading that book instead um, <laughs> to fit the prompt. This is the third book in the Akatar series, A Court of Thorns and Roses series by Sarah J Maas. Um, I have really, really enjoyed the first two books and I'm looking forward to getting to the third one. The only reason why I haven't read this yet is, honest to God, because I'm scared of what happens. And at one point, this was getting rehyped really on, like this whole series was getting rehyped really on BookTok um, and therefore on Bookstagram as well. And I was trying so hard not to get spoiled about what happens on Instagram and I haven't yet. So I feel like I really need to read this before I get spoiled. Roll number four. Five. One, two, three, four, five. Uh, third person, a book set or in third person. So for roll four, we landed on third person. And for this, I'm gonna be reading Wilder Than Midnight by Carrie Burner, I think, or Byrne. Um, my niece actually gave this, this is a middle grade slash children's book. Um, no idea what it's about. I will read you guys the synopsis in a second. <laughs> but my niece actually gave this to me to read. If you guys didn't know, I'm doing a teaching degree at university at the moment. Um, and I love to keep up to date with children literature, children's literature um, and read as many children slash middle grade books as I can so that I can recommend them to my class. So this one says, Silverhorn is a kingdom of long kept secrets, a castle of locked doors and hush whispers, a village trapped between terrors known and unknown, a forest of trees and tangled thorns and something is in the air stirring up the leaves. Safi is a good girl, used to following the rules yet curious to take the path unexplored. Aurelia is a defiant girl, locked in a tower but planning her escape. Wild Rose is a fierce girl, raised by wolves and determined to set her forest free. Together they will change the they will change life in Silverthorn forever. I have a feeling that this is a play on fairy tale. Well, hopefully the, what will be the final roll, roll number five. Shit. Okay, it's a five. There's a five on the floor, guys. Just nine. Okay, let's go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Lowest rated. And for the fifth and final roll, which honest to God, I was expecting another double because that's normally my luck whenever I do anything like this. We got lowest rated. Now my Goodreads is not up to date by any means. I have basically gone onto my want to read shelf and I've organized it by average rating. So you can see at the top is Stephen King, um, The Green Mile, a book that I avoid like the plague and still really, really want to read. Um, but yeah, we're gonna reverse this because this is highest rated with 4.46 stars overall. That's how I can tell. So if we reverse this, then we can see what our lowest rated are. Okay, so we've got The Final Girl Support Group by Grady Hendrix. I haven't actually brought that yet, so I can't read that. Oh, and then The Road Trip by Beth O'Leary, which I'm pretty sure I have on Kindle book. So we're gonna read The Road Trip by Beth O'Leary. This averagely has 3.62 stars, which honestly, not that bad. Let's read the synopsis from Goodreads. Addie and her sister are about to embark on an epic road trip to a friend's wedding in the north of Scotland. The payless is all planned and the snacks are packed, but not long after setting off, a car slams into the back of theirs. The driver is none other than Addie's ex, Dylan, who she's avoided since their traumatic breakup two years earlier. Dylan and his best mate are heading to the wedding too, and they've totaled their car, so Addie has no choice but to offer them a ride. The car is soon jam-packed full of luggage and secrets, and with 300 miles ahead of them, Dylan and Addie can't avoid confronting the very messy history of their relationship. Will they make it to the wedding on time? And, more importantly, is this really the end of the road? Addie and Dylan. 
my September reading, or my book up on TBR so far, it's not a big one, but we might end up adding more on if I do end up getting through all of these books, which to be fair, I am in a massive reading mood at the moment. So we may get through these books faster than I anticipated. These are the books that I will be reading in the month of September, um, plus The Road Ship, Road Ship? Plus The Road Trip by Beth O'Leary. We've got Invisible Girl, which is for the prompt of spring, Just Like Home, which was for published for set in 2022 or since 2020 uh, since 2020 then we've got uh, court of rings and ruin by sarah j mass which is for features of romance then we also have wilder than midnight for a book written written in third person and we have the road trip by beth o'leary for lowest rated book on my goodreads tbr and that is everything for today's video. I really hope you guys enjoyed. And if you did, please do like and subscribe to our channel if you're new around here. I'd like to see more bookish content from me. And I will see you guys all in my next video.